so thank you, dear. Um, well, it was already mentioned, it's a short talk, so like we don't have a, a lot of time. So let's get started in how to get to the software products line of Tribase Collections. And to do so, I would first like to introduce like what collections are or what I mean by that. Collections are usually data types and data structures that are contained in standard libraries of programming languages. And according to the Java documentation, a collection is nothing else than a data type that uh, represents a group of objects. So now the question is like, okay, what are the characteristics of that group of objects? And uh, those can be defined by like a lot of like different criteria. Well, to start with, like what is the data type semantics, like the abstraction it adheres to? Is it like a list, a set, or a map data type? Or can it be updated? Like is it a mutable or immutable data structure? Does it allow uh, sequential, concurrent, or parallel processing? And I could go on like with pages and pages of uh, these kind of criteria that characterize um, collection data structures. But the most important thing like uh, to take from that is that collection data structures form a large domain with a lot of variability inside. Well, and that ver like that complexity is often also like uh, reflected in package structures of uh, collection libraries of languages like Scala or Java, for example, where you see some of these criteria or a selection of the cross products from them also like in the packages there. And for each of these like intersection points, you then have like handcrafted, hand optimized one off solutions. So there's an engineer like developing uh, all these different variants like that have different performance requirements and uh, yeah. And that first of all is like very hard to do. And What's even harder is like to then like evolve that over time. So for example, if like some of the underlying technology or like advances or like of the encodings. So it's very hard like to like invest the same manpower like to update all of that like along the way. And collection data structures, uh, they also have a lot of like implicit like uh, or trade-offs and performance assumption built in that are not obvious to the users all the time. And why is that? Because collections are like generalist data structures. They are assumed like to perform well for a wide area like of tasks. So like you shouldn't worry about it. It should scale like from a small input like to large input as well. And that makes it also like difficult from the user perspective uh, to to see if the user can like use a, like a variant of that, for example, for a more specialized tasks. So it's not possible to easily like take a collection and like adjust it to like certain workflows. Well, we're sitting at Gypsy here and you could think about a generative programming solution to ease some of the pain points like for library engineers maintaining collections, but also like users that are using the data structures. And you can say, well, let's come up like with a software products line that encodes the knowledge, the domain knowledge of these data structures and the variability and you just feed it like with some inputs and you get like your personalized collection as you wish. And well, that's like a noble goal, but uh, uh, seems quite like challenging to achieve. And on the way, there are like some things to solve first. So what we need is like uh, amongst others, a, a good understanding about the domain of collection. So like where is the, vari where sits the variability within? And also like, how can that variability like realize with actual data structure design? And that's like one part of it. The other part is, well, we also like need uh, domain specific abstractions that are capable enough to like concisely capture the essence of the domain and also like let us like in the end generate data structures that are like comparable like to the state of the art. And so that are like the, the challenges, for example, we took on uh, in this contribution, like to, to gain more understanding of, uh, or like to document the variability within the domain of collections, but also like to detail some of the, um, some of the um, yeah, intermediate abstractions that are necessary to generate them. It's not sufficient like to just have a large set of abstractions to cover the domain, because if you're if your generator approximates the size of your collections, you didn't win anything. You just put the maintenance burden on the generator itself. So the title already said that uh, 
yeah, we're dealing with a special like set of collections here, and we focus on tri-based collections. So a tri is a prefix tree data structure, and in the modern context, tries are like the foundation to encode efficient immutable data structures, as you can find them, for example, in languages like Clojure or the standard libraries of Scala or in the Rascal language. And we had the intuition that, well, with tri data structures, we can deliver on both fronts. So we can devise uh, concise abstractions that are yet powerful enough to create, like, to generate state of the art uh, data structures with state of the art performance. And so I would like to continue to talk a bit more about the variability and, like, uh, what we did, like, did there to understand the variability of the domain. So to do so, I would give you like just a short visual glimpse of what a tri looks like, and especially here like an array map tri data structure. So compared to probably like a continuous array that you know from like hash maps or these data structures, a tri is a tree of arrays. So you just chunk up the data in smaller slices, and what you then do is like you arrange it in a tree structure. And actually the tree structure itself also carries information. So for example, in the case of the list, you might like encode the index on the edges of the trees. Or if it's like a hash map or a hash set, you might encode, for example, parts of the hash code like in these prefix tree data structures. So for tries, we then like uh, did a domain analysis and we looked at all the different like or like most popular implementations for variants collection data structures implemented in tries. And as a result, we also like came up with um, a feature model describing actually like implementation choices you have like for these tri data structures and for the optimizations for the optimizations within, but also like for uh, encoding different data type semantics. And once you have like a feature model description, like here you just see like a short excerpt that like uh, corresponds to the previous figure. But if you're interested in the full model, have a look at the paper, please. Once you have that, you can devise feature configurations, for example, that uh, designate like here a hash map, for example. And you can define the properties of that. And there's nothing wrong in, for example, uh, having a predefined set of these like feature configurations, but if you are have certain needs, for example, uh, that deviate like from the defaults, as you might see them in collection libraries, well, go ahead and change them, and hopefully the generator is capable enough to spit that out. So, well, so that's like an important like milestone on the front end, like that's the input we feed the generator, but also like, uh, like abstracts the domain knowledge on the inside of the generator. But what's even more important is how to concisely encode the differences. And that's like what I would like to focus now on. So as I showed you before, a try is a tree of arrays. So in a try, each node is conceptually an array. That's a very simplified view because you have additional encoding on the side, like bitmap encoding for like compacting sparse data and so on. But in essence, it's an array. And well, that arrays and the encoding internally changes and like varies like from data type to data type that you want to generate. So it can be something, let's say, straightforward, where if, like some mixed data approaches here, or it can be like get really complex with having like different type section of an array, or well, somewhere in between. In this particular example, the arrays <laughs> are modeled like according to a certain schema. So you have like on the left, you have all the data, like the payload that you actually store there. And that is like accessed from left to right. And on the right side, you see like differently color coded, all the references to the subtree structures. And these are actually indexed from right to left. As said in, because we are dealing with tries that are essentially array, like trees of arrays, the tree, uh, the, the array presentation and like the sections within are like at the core of the domain. So that's also like where we started with is in 
devising like uh, representations and like term representations and how you can like uh, define uh, all the different partitions or like sections within your arrays. And you can imagine uh, that to be very similar to just like partitions on your hard drive. Like you have a large chunk of data and you just slice it up in different um, in different uh, type sections or that have different properties. And once you have that basic description, you can just like rewrite that description based on probably your configuration and then get like optimized memory layouts depending on like what your collection should deal with or like what's your target platform. And as I said before, like we're dealing like here with tries that are predominantly used for uh, for immutable data structures. In immutable data structures, you have to perform a lot of copy operations. Let's say I just want to insert data in the payload section. So I will then like have to clone that particular node. And if I clone that node, it's just like one of the simplest operations to do there. Uh, I want to do that in a generic way. So we also like formulated like all the 12 abstractions in like how to modify trees, also in term representations. And what it gives us is that we essentially can also like synthesize the copy operations with like two simple primitives like that are like uh, as you create like streaming copy operation with range copies and injections. And if you look at that code example, what you don't see is like any of the high level abstractions and what kind of like directions data is encoded and what the types are. So we can like create efficient copy operations like from that simple descriptions as well. With that I would like to uh, conclude and summarize. So this paper like uh, aimed to present a generative programming uh, overview of like how you can uh, create a software product line for collections. Particularly we aimed at tri-based collections that are an important cornerstone for uh, Im important cornerstone for efficient immutable uh, data structures. Uh, as one important part, we devised a feature model that captures the variability within the domain, and we also devised uh, a concise set of domain-specific abstractions to efficiently generate those. So, okay. Uh, if you would uh, get in contact with me, you can find me on Twitter, talk to me later. You can find some generated data structures in the capsule library and the generator here. Thank you for your attention.